For this video, I want to cover another example of solving a quadratic inequality. Remember that this is basically a quadratic equation only. We're looking at inequality here, so whether something is greater than or less than. Let's go ahead and get into the steps. The very first thing that we want to do is get everything over to one side. This is so that we can have our quadratic in relation to zero. It will really help us determine whether it is positive or negative, rather than trying to hunt down its relation to a number like 16. That's not quite as easy. Alright? The second thing you want to check for is make sure that your powers are in descending order. That means start with the largest, go all the way until you have just the constant. Perfect. Alright, if it looks uh, something like that, now we want to try and find out where is this equal to zero. And you can usually do that by factoring or using the quadratic formula. For this guy, I'm just going to factor it. So we'll end up breaking it into two factors. We'll see if we can determine what numbers we need on the inside here. Let's see, I need two numbers to give us me uh, 5x squared. So 5x and x, that should do it. Now I need two numbers that will give me 16. Uh, so let's do 4 and 4. Okay. Let's double check our outside and inside terms. So my outside would be 20, inside would be 4. So I think I need a negative 20 and a positive 4. That should do it. All right, let's double check our terms. First terms check, outside and inside check, and last terms check. All right. So I'm factoring this so that I can tell that this will equal 0 when x is equal to a negative 4 fifths and when x is equal to 4. All right, now be careful. Don't stop there because that is not necessarily our solution. That is just where uh, this quadratic would be equal to 0. The solution that we'll end up getting will be ranges of values uh, for an inequality. So we need to look at a number line around these key values uh, to see whether those intervals will be positive or negative, so whether they really satisfy what we have. Alright, let's quickly make a number line. And on this number line, I will put the negative 4 fifths. And I'll put 4. So those were our key values that uh, this was equal to 0. Along the side here, we'll put those factors. So this was a 5x plus 4. And the other one x minus 4. Alright, now what we want to do with this is take test points around these key values, so in those intervals, and then test them in our factors. What we're looking for here is whether they are positive or negative. Alright, let's grab something over here in the first interval. So I could choose anything all the way down to negative infinity and all the way up to a negative 4 fifths. Just to make sure we're in that interval, let's choose a number like negative 2. Negative 2, when you plug it into this factor, what do you get? So negative 2 times 5 would be a negative 10, plus 4, looks like a negative 6. Go ahead and record the sign, that's the important part. Now let's choose something in this interval. Well, it looks like 0 is in there, so I'll take 0, plug it in. So 5 times 0 is 0, plus 4, looks like we get a positive number. All right, and one more test value from this interval. How about 5? That seems like it'll work good. So grab 5, plug it in here. It'll be 25 plus 4, positive 29. Awesome. So now I know what that particular factor's value is for each of these ranges. Let's play the same game with the second factor. So grabbing a negative 2, plugging it in here. If I subtract 4 from it, I'll be at negative 6. If I grab 0 from this interval and plug it in, I'll have a negative 4. And if I grab 5 from the last interval and plug it in, I'll have a positive 1. Great, now I know what both of these factors are doing. Now, in my overall quadratic, both of these factors are being multiplied together. So I'm going to take these signs here and multiply them to see what the overall result will be. So if I have a negative times a negative, what would be the result? Well, looks like we get a positive value. Positive times a negative, that would be negative. 
And of course, the last one, positive times a positive, another positive value. So this last row here is representing what the overall polynomial is going to be. So which uh, of these intervals will I end up taking? Well, it all depends on our original uh, quadratic. If we look back at our steps, we want to know where is our quadratic greater than zero. This means we'll be taking the positive values, the ones that were greater than zero. Another thing that we want to be careful of, this says that we are strictly looking for the ones that are greater than zero. This means I will not include either of these points. All right, so grabbing just the positive ones, looks like we're taking this interval down here and this interval up here. So we are going from negative infinity up to negative four-fifths. Remember, we do not want to include that endpoint. The other interval we'll take from four up to infinity. Again, do not include the four. Since I have two intervals, I will connect them with my union symbol. So just like that, these two intervals represent the solution to my inequality. Any number in those will work. So remember, make this nice little table and keep track of all of your signs so you can see what the overall quadratic sign will end up being.